Good morning everyone. Oh my gosh, I've not even spoken to you yet because I was held hostage at one o'clock in the morning yesterday by another spider. Oh my gosh, it must be some kind of season. I don't know what's going on. But we are currently walking up to the entrance to the Chelsea Flower Show. I'm with Lauren. And she's looking very gorgeous in her lace overcoat. Oh my goodness. Um, we've just got a taxi here. I haven't even shown you my outfit yet, but I'm green and floral and I've got my little blackberry punnet and we're heading inside now. <laughs> Lauren just turned to me and said, is it too early for Rosie? She doesn't know me very well, clearly. So we're coming in for our first class. <laughs> Oh, thank I'll you. I'll small tasters then, and then if you feel you need some more. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Orange chai is my favourite thing. Oh, look, actually, Yeah, what do you think? Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Okay. So, ladies, you are going to be left in the capable hands of our actual cellar master, because we're going to get a tour now. So, okay. please do get him to pour you a lot of wine. There is always so much inspiration. I feel like I show the same stuff every year, but. Oh, I just love all of these antique planters. So gorgeous. Beautiful little water feature. Oh. We're just perusing all of the gardens at the moment and I just bumped into August from Le Manoir, so it's lovely, we just got a picture. If I find the picture, I'll pop it on screen, but it was very, very lovely. Hang on, sorry, I'm I'm gate crashing. I'm coming over this side. Sorry, sorry, oh, oh. Oh no, oh dear, oh dear. It's only day one. No, exactly. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love these shepherd's huts. Oh my goodness. This is a really good sized one as well. That would be very, very handy to have at our house. I know we're supposed to be looking at the shepherd's huts, but as I always say, there is always so much inspiration here. And this has massively inspired me for the fire pit in our woodland because it's something that we're looking at now to make it a little bit more beautiful. And I love this willow weaving and how it's created sort of like a little border so we could do that against the wildflower, but then interplant some seats as well and then have the fire pit in the center. I love this so lovely so this lady i follow you on instagram oh, already yeah i'm a big fan <laughs> i follow this lady on instagram and i am in love with her work you'll know that i like botanical uh, printed and embossed pieces quite a lot but i've always been searching for someone that does vases in this way and she does the most beautiful beautiful vases and you can just get little bud vases as well there's alliums gypsophila there's cow parsley all of the good stuff ferns it's just gorgeous oh my gosh i love these ones as well i think i'm gonna have to get some of these for my dressing room yeah yeah i also like the one with the white uh, trim at the top there, the blue with the white trim. That's quite like a sort of Henley regatta style, isn't it? It's lovely. Very, very. I absolutely love this jewelry brand. They do such beautiful botanical pieces, even like the little sunflowers, cornflowers, ferns. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. So the brand is Michael Michaud and look at all of this oh my gosh it's got all of the book i've literally i've got this book at home <laughs> i love this that looks so cute i believe so from memory oh it looks so good on you oh we've just come to the lulu guinness stand and i have fallen in love with their basket bags so i feel like this is my answer to not getting the hermes picnic bag because this is so much more beautiful these are hand woven and then you add the flowers to the top so whatever you want if you want it to go with your outfit for a wedding like how gorgeous is that going to be for a wedding like if you were to have the, your little flowers down oh my gosh i'm obsessed <gasps> i really really want to take that to the wedding oh my gosh I don't know where I'd get flowers in Italy, but I can just go pick them, can't I? 
so Lauren also has a blackberry punnet coming but it's not it's not arrived yet we were going to be twins today with our little punnets <laughs> Strawberry punnets back. Yeah, Stephanie. Are, are they going to bring back the strawberry punnets for Wimbledon? I love this. Have you been so like, oh, they've got burgers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are you hungry? Yeah, I have, I have really eaten from here. <laughs> Lydia's shopping. These are the only wicker baskets that they have limited edition for the show. So we're having to take it now just in case they sell out. <laughs> and she's so happy with herself. Literally, there is no wicker bag that could ever tempt me more than this. So these are limited edition that here at Chelsea Flower Show. And once they're gone, they're gone. And I'm getting to buy the first one. And honestly, I think I've got the, the best one. We think sunflowers will yeah. be stunning inside. I think I'm going show to show underneath. Can you show how it how it works? Oh the, yes. So the underneath, basically, you just pick whatever flowers you want. Oh, the flowers stopping me. And you just pop those on. Plenty of room in there. Yep. <laughs> this is what I mean about finding a good wicker bag. You know, we were like talking about the. Picnic. We sent loads to each other, yeah, different ones that we wanted. I have just fallen in love with this jewellery brand. I love that they do. The I've got Portia and Barclay. Oh, amazing! <laughs> And uh, they do this gorgeous charm bracelet here that you can get all different types of dogs. And yes, they do have sausage dogs. Um, they've got acorns and sunflowers. It is so beautiful. I think I'd want to get this in gold. Thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. Thank 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 you. Honestly, some of these stands are just so beautiful. Like these setups are stunning. So this is for a candle brand called Freckleface. Yeah, so it's a candle brand called Freckleface and they do um, wax melts, reed diffusers, candles, and they smell really, really lovely. Sometimes um, I think that wax melts can be a little bit synthetic-y, but they smell beautiful. floral oud. I feel like that's very you. <laughs> oh, I didn't smell the English rose one. Well, that's lovely. So I've ended up picking uh, a selection of the sweet pea and orange blossom wax melts. I usually, like I said, don't like wax melts, but these are completely different. So the brand is Freckle Face and they're all handmade in England and they do so many different ones. They've got English rose, um, green tea and lemongrass and it's such a beautiful little brand so we've come to find the plant school because our friends are looking after this and we have the, the wonderful antiques from Ron Green which is a local uh, business whom Ali and I absolutely love um, so the gorgeous planter here is from Ron Green we've got these gorgeous little chairs and obviously this this sideboard is exquisite and basically this is our friend's sister's plant the plant school and I'm actually thinking about maybe doing a course with them because obviously I've just done my classes with uh, Le Manoir and I want to do more I do really really want to do more so I think um, I'm gonna look into these courses because they do a tree course and they do the specialist plant course they also do the, the plant course and it's just gorgeous. I feel like their little setup here always inspires me so much with all of the antiques and the old woodwork. It looks lovely, it's just lovely to see your friends here. But I think that we, we've had a little bit of a mooch around. It's quite cold. So I'm thinking what we might actually do now is head to get some lunch and some drinks um, and warm up a little bit because it's not as warm as yesterday. So yeah, but I have bought a lot, a lot more than I thought I would, so yeah. <laughs> oh, the wind is in your hair. <laughs> My biggest <laughs> Amazing. So, I think I've said this before, but 
if I hadn't got my Alley text, I do think I would have had to have get, gotten one of these woodpecker joinery uh, greenhouses because I do love the wood and I think it goes really nicely with our potting shed. And I love that they're royal warrant holders and they're just beautiful, but I'm sure there'll be other houses where I can try different ones, although I can obviously take my greenhouse with me. So yeah, I wanted to show you that this is a little bit smaller than mine, but it's lovely, very nice. Well, we're now in a taxi heading to Scott's. Yeah. Scott's, Lauren's Choice. I've never been, so I'm very excited to experience something new. At the end, I met Borgia and Dean from um, my tiny estate and I was such a fan girl. It was so lovely to, to see them. And then we met the guy from Notting Hill as well. Um, what was his name? Tim? Tim McKinnery. Tim McKinnery, um, who plays the like banker friend. And they honestly, I, we were being such fan girls. It was great, I loved it. But now we're heading to Scott's to have some food, to warm up a little bit, although it did start to get warmer just as we were leaving. Um, but we felt like we'd seen most of the stuff anyway. And so, yeah, rosé and food, good to go. I always think that Lauren has the best recommendations when it comes to eating out and staying anywhere in the world, but London specifically, so. It is quite a long menu, so I don't know if I should actually read it out to you, but I'll let you know what I choose. <laughs> yes, need more space. Ordered too much. Are you still working with the bread? We'll keep the bread on the side. Just yeah, you can pop, we can pop that here. Lovely. We also have some lemon. Green beans, yeah, looks so. Lovely. Thank you. Yes. I tried to make it sexy. I tried to make it sexy. I love that. That's very sexy. I'm trying to my best. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. This is what dining out with Lauren is like. She cannot have a meal with an, without not having, wait, does that make sense? Without having anything sweet. And here we are with three desserts and ice cream. And she's spooning one of the newest ones onto my plate. What is this one? This is the baked bar tart. Ooh. I thought baked bar had jam in it. Yeah, there's some jam just hiding at the bottom. Oh. I'm not gonna get a job here. I'm gonna end up wearing that, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> just butchered it. <laughs> oh, hang on, just put the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yummy. This is my candid entrance. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren was like, I was going to film you coming back, can you go and do it again? I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Very candid. And I filmed some champagne pouring. Oh, wow, well done. You're like the best YouTube wife ever. <laughs> we started at lunch and now we're here for dinner. <laughs> What's that mean for the Titanic? No, 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 no. It's been 84 years. My idea that we see one like these. <laughs> like, no wonder it took so long to cook. I was expecting this tiny looking thing. For some reason it is zoomed in on absolute max level. Oh, that'll be me that's done that. <laughs> Good afternoon everyone. I am makeup free, freshly washed but makeup free. Um, I have been in the living room working at my laptop for such a long time that my eyes are like completely bloodshot. I have suitcases out because I'm packing for a trip. However, you are more than likely going to watch this video after I'm back from the trip. I don't have to vlog this, okay? I could just not vlog it, vlog it, but I just always think why not these days? I enjoy vlogging so much, but I just apologize that it won't be in like normal succession, but I wanted to show you this stuff anyway. So essentially, I'm Lydia from the past or the future? Who knows? You're gonna watch me in Italy first. But I wanted to show you the things, A, that I got from um, Chelsea Flower Show. So first up, my little little bag from 
Lulu Guinness, obviously the flowers are from the Real Flower Company. Now they're looking a little bit sad at the moment, um, but the smell. So what um, this particular florist has done has gone back in and replaced the, the gene or the chromosome or whatever it is that's in flowers. It's actually removed um, as part of like growing flowers that makes them smell stronger. Now they're not the, what it does is the reason why it's been removed is because it can often uh, shorten the lifespan of the flowers when picked. However, their focus really is on the experience, the, the fragrance of the flowers. And this is the powderiest, most beautiful rose ever. But the thing I love about this bag is that you obviously, like this is obviously a lovely touch and you add the little vials to the flowers underneath but you don't have to have it with the flowers on because it's got this beautiful decorative willow lid to it or you can just wear it without the, the lid but it's the most wonderful way to add complementary floral colours and things like that to your outfit so with the green dress that I was wearing yesterday we were talking about how lovely it would be to add like sunflowers and things like that or whatever complementary pink colour you would want and then you just pop your lid on and you keep your stuff inside and it's just such a talking piece. Not to mention that I really loved this because it was that sort of nod to craftsmanship that I love. These are all handmade wicker baskets. They were all completely individual and these were, unfortunately for you, not for me, they're, they're limited edition and they were only being sold at Chelsea Flower Show. So they had a selection of them. They were all different. I got the most sort of shallow one that was there. Um, and these, it's all just beautifully handmade. And I just thought this is such a special piece. I'm really getting into Lulu Guinness bags at the moment which is not something I ever thought I would say I've got to be honest um, it's not a brand that I would often think of in terms of me purchasing from but I went ahead and I purchased this full price and I'm so happy because I feel like it's going to look lovely in my dressing room as well just as a display piece like you could obviously just put a vase in this and you could even put a pot if you wanted to and have the flowers sticking out of the pot or whatever. But I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So that was one thing that I got. Where are the other bits and pieces though? <laughs> in my little Lulu Guinness bag. I've also got some bits that have arrived from previous orders. Um, but the other pieces that I got, these were from the brand that you would have seen. It was called Freckle Face. What I loved was that their wax melts were super natural feeling and smelling. They weren't really synthetic, honestly. I'm not a huge fan of wax melts, but the, the orange blossom and the um, orange blossom and what was the other one that I got? Orange blossom. I, I would have shown you them anyway, but I just got a selection of the two most floral ones there other than the rose. And they were lovely and they've got 20 hours of burn time on them, which is such a great amount. And it's a wonderful little family business. I just thought it was so cute and he was just so lovely. And then I was handed this, and you'll know that this is something that I've got quite quite passionate about um, over recent times in that having my friend's children over, I definitely realised that there's a huge, huge, huge disconnect between children and um, vegetables and growing your own food. I am a child who would not eat vegetables. I am that child. And I'm, I'm still very, very grateful that my parents never forced me to do that, to never eat, to, to eat them. But I think that perhaps through like educational programs when I was really young, perhaps if I had learnt how growing, I, I can't say for definite, it could have been something that I was just destined to discover later on in life. But um, I think maybe that could have been an option. I think it's a great way to get kids loving vegetables and growing their own food and getting them involved in that side of things. So anything that sort of centres around that. And this is a book that was developed I believe his name was, yes, curated, curated by Tom Wilday. And um, Tom was there and he handed this to me. And basically this, this is a book, so there's two of them here. That it's a book and it's called The Plantable Children's Book, The Carrot Who Is Too Big For His Bed. Plant me and I grow real carrots. So essentially, once you finish the book, I mean, you can still continue to read. It's all designed about removing the cover and the back of the book and planting it and it will grow carrots. Um, all of the paper is completely compostable and I just think that's such a lovely gift. I know that my nephew, Austin, will love this. My mum has actually just sent me a picture of her lasagna that has parsley from his own kitchen garden on the top of it and he's literally like, I think he's like five or six. Um, 
so I just loved this and he handed it to me and he was like, can you do a post about it? And I was like, do you know what? I'd rather just tell you about it in this video and explain to you why I like it. So um, that was the other thing that I got from Chelsea Flower Show. Um, and we had such a lovely day, but we didn't stay as long as we would normally stay, just purely because, first of all, it was quite cold at the beginning. And we actually made a really good whip around, so it was lovely. And then we went to Scott's, and we were in Scott's from lunchtime until I had to run for my train home. We had such a lovely evening, but I probably had a little bit too much fun because today I've had a lot of work to do, like I said, and we are flying to Italy tomorrow for our friend's wedding. Um, our friends Josh and Lumbe are getting married in Rapallo in Italy. And how we've structured it is we are going to the wedding and then when the wedding celebrations finish, we are driving from Rapallo to Tuscany and booking into a hotel. So you'll see all about this, but Ali will be vlogging Rapallo and I will be vlogging Tuscany. We've essentially like agreed on that. Um, and this was a dress that I ordered, not for the wedding, because I think there's too much white in it. I don't even know if I'm going to keep it. It was an extremely spenny dress. It's from a brand that I've been intrigued by for such a long time. And I didn't think it was going to arrive in time. So I thought I would open it with you. I have seen that this brand is either opening or has opened a store in London next to Erdem. So this is, and I have to get, I, I do know how to say this name, Monique Hulier. Monique Hulier, I think that's how you say it. Anyway, you know I love a botanical floral and I think this might be too small for me, you know. Just looking at how it's fitting, I'm gonna have to try it on. But I thought for all of the lovely events, it's also bando. I think I've, if this fits, I will take it to, but I think this is gonna be a bit too big, a, a bit too small, sorry. It feels very, very narrow. What size did I go for? I went for size zero, which is my normal size. But I, if I'm going somewhere sunny and hot, I prefer a strapless dress because I don't have to worry about tan lines. So if I can find them that look lovely and they look nice and, and um, uh, structured and beautiful, and I actually really like the fabric of this as well. I don't actually know what, what it is. I didn't even check. But obviously not for a wedding because I think there's probably a bit too much fabric. Uh, a bit too much white on this fabric. Oh, there's no label. How bizarre. There's no like washing instructions or anything. Oh, it's up here, that's why. <laughs> so it's 100% silk and the contrast is 100% cotton. And the lining is 100% silk as well. So super lovely. It's very nice and lightweight as well. In contrast to the uh, Oscar de la Renta one, that was super heavy and super structured. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try it on. It's quite see-through though. I'm gonna have to see how this goes. And then, this is blooming heavy. <laughs> so, this is a delivery from Mila. This was sent to me from the team. And I saw this on a girl that I follow on Instagram. And she wore it to a wedding and she looked phenomenal in it. And they saw my comment and it was Sophie. Is it Sophie? Yeah, Sophie. Um, and they sent it to me. So this is so heavy though. In comparison to that dress from Nessa Porte, this is so really heavy. And I'm basically deciding on what outfits I'm taking to Italy and what I'm packing. Wow, this is so heavy. It smells amazing. Oh wow. Wow. Goodness me. This is such Bridgerton vibes. I love this. And see, this one might be too big. Well, maybe it won't be, but it's got these big puffy, puffy things. And the thing is, Sophie's so much taller than me that she, it, it was like the perfect length for her. But for me, it might be too long. However, I love the hydrangea print on this. Let's try them on because we need to get packing. So let's just get them tried on and see if they work. Very, very exciting. Well, ignore the suitcases, but it's a yes from me. The only thing I'm super shocked about is that it is quite see-through. Um, I don't know why I was so worried about how it was gonna fit, but yeah, it's just, it's just quite see-through. So I will have to wear like a slip underneath it, but the way that it moves, the way that it fits, I just think this is so gorgeous. Oh, my first Monique Hulier. Oh my gosh, she also does one 
that has Lily of the Valley all over it. And that was one that I was initially going to buy, but the only thing I don't like about it is it had sort of like a ruched bodice. And I always feel that that makes me look a little bit frumpy. I like this more structured bodice. This is gorgeous. I'm so happy. Okay, next one. Well, I was wrong about both of them because they both fit beautifully and I love this. I wish, I might, do you know what I might do? I might have this taken up so that it's less wearable like a gown. However, I would love to wear this like really boho-y sort of princess vibes with the hair. Um, it has this like these hip rolls. So you'll know from a lot of my dresses with Karen Millen, I put shoulder rolls. This has hip rolls. So it's, called, it's, it's almost like structure. That's what I mean when it feels very like Bridgerton. It gives it this amazing shape to the bust. And honestly, if this was just a little bit shorter, I'd probably wear this to the wedding because it's gorgeous, like so dramatic. And it's like not white, which I think is just super important. But yeah, wow, love it. Both wins. By the way, I'm, I am gonna take the other dress with me to Italy. I'm gonna take the Monique Houllier one because I'll wear it on our second part of our holiday, basically. Good morning, everyone, from a very beautiful and sunny England. Oh. We are back from Italy and we should be all caught up now on um, the vlogs obviously everything went a little bit like higgledy piggledy which i don't think is necessarily a bad thing sometimes i don't think it's necessary that my life is sort of shared in real time and i certainly don't share in real time on like stories or anything like that so you never really know where i am but yeah i think it's good to just fall out of sync every now and again um but we're sort of back up to date now and i'm back in in england and it's just lovely to be home yesterday i actually didn't vlog um we are my goodness me babe you look really really sexy today <laughs> that is a sight that is a sight so i didn't vlog yesterday we went to epsom downs with aston martin and i didn't vlog because those are the days when I shouldn't really work. <laughs> my, I really struggle on the first day, two days of my uh, time of the month, my like cycle. And I was really, really unwell on the way home. And it was just a good thing that I didn't vlog, but we have so much to catch up on. However, today is a little bit of a date day for Ali and I in the garden. We are either going to walk down to the pub or we are going to fire up the pizza oven. We haven't decided yet. I feel like there's so much to show you in the garden now. Like, look how these beds either side of the living room are coming like into bloom and blossom. The alliums are actually working really, really well now that the, the main foliage is kind of lifting up a little bit. Um, it looks so, so nice. We've increased the um, watering and like drip system that we have to water everything because it was basically turned off and I think that's why these trees aren't looking as fruitful as they should do. It was turned off and left off for too long. We were waiting for work to continue and it was kind of turned off and we didn't really understand what was going on. But <laughs> everything else is looking really nice and luscious. I was actually out here sweeping the patio because my favourite thing is keeping this patio like nice and um, pretty. We've got the last of our cushions which have arrived from the amazing local seamstress and it's exactly the same color as everything else. We need to get the others out, but they work so beautifully with the table. I'm so, so happy with how these have turned out and it's such a durable fabric as well. And it just, it looks perfect. The little piping detail, oh, it's chef's kiss. We are obviously still waiting for the outdoor kitchen, but that's not stopping us from using uh, basically everything. And look at the wildflower my goodness me i think these are my favorite of all of the wildflowers um oh well hello there hello there oh unfortunately we have this little running strip through it that the sausage dogs have created for themselves but for the most part everything is growing up beautifully even the little island there everything has just gone wild and it just 
oh my gosh looks so gorgeous the cow parsley is up and it's it's honestly like we've painted we've actually popped the first pictures of this like transformation of this area even though it's not fully done yet we're still wanting foliage to grow in we want to obviously get things growing up this flank of the house we're thinking window boxes we also want to try and reclaim some little shutters for this end of the house as well I think it'll look really it'll just soften it a little bit but having these doors open on the house is making me so happy look at this oh. and this whole sort of this is like um I think I can't remember this is the north facing like end of the house and this must be either east or west I can't really remember um, but this whole end of the house was sort of designed around um, creating inside outside spaces so when we get to throw all of these doors open it is it just transforms it it really does and the view from the living room out onto the table is just my favorite thing so yes, everything's looking really, really lovely. Um, unfortunately, there have been some plants lost in my time away, but it just means I get to refresh and plant things up. We've also got these beds down the front, which are about to come into full bloom. So these are beds of roses, lavender, and um, topiary balls. I love the structure that the topiary balls bring, but um, when this all goes purple, I honestly, I can't wait to see it. So here as well, we've got beautiful ruffly roses coming up out here. And it is just a treat to see this all coming together now. This bed as well has erupted. <laughs> feels like overnight we've got some beautiful kind of um, deep burgundy hydrangeas at the back there then this is our teacup flower which is going wild this was a gift from our neighbor and it's self sort of supporting on the wall it's just going to bloom up there it's only an annual so um, we'll ha we'll have to try and cultivate it so that it comes up next year the only thing that isn't uh, in its best is this <laughs> this is our like border so as we mentioned our irrigation was turned off and it was probably turned off for too long these haven't survived these are going to be replaced but they just haven't been replaced just yet so yes that's the only thing that the arch is silvering up with the gate so gorgeously oh it makes me so happy seeing this well look how this has grown in my goodness me it is wild and wonderful out here. So this is my favorite thing. Um, these little flowers that come into bloom in front of my greenhouse just make me so happy. They're like little ladies. They're such a beautiful color. It's sort of like a blushy purple color and it's gorgeous. I also need to clean the um, bird bath. The one thing that I struggle with is my spinach going to seed. Either they're not getting enough water or they're getting too much or they're not getting shade or they're not getting enough sun. I personally think that they're not getting enough water. So I'm gonna sow some more seeds of that today. I'm going to take these up. Um, I'm also gonna let these breathe. I've got so much salad coming through and that is what I'm gonna do. Mr. Millen Gordon is quite possibly the sexiest greenhouse cleaner I have ever seen. Look at him up there. Not a clue that we're watching him. And looking that ridiculously good looking. For anyone who needed it, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I've just sown some new carrots, parsnips, spinach. Um, into this area that was empty in the beds. I think I'm going to um, get out some more courgettes um, and get them in the beds. I've got my beans that have come through from my gardening school at uh, Le Manoir and I think I want to try and get them out here as well but they grow really really big so I don't know if I have a structure. The other thing that needs to come out is my pumpkins I think although I think I might have sown them a bit early. Who knows? 
but I need to get them in the ground out here anyway to see what happens. Um, so I'm going to need to manure the bed down there and de-weed it and get those out because that's a little pumpkin bed just down the side there. Well, I did what I never do and I picked flowers from my garden. There's cosmos in here, there's lots of the wildflower and then some leaves from the plum tree, basically. <laughs> and they're all popped into this little posy because we have friends coming over uh, last minute and we're just gonna rustle something up. Ali's gonna do the dough and I'm gonna throw a salad together from the kitchen garden. So I thought, cause they're gonna stay over cause they're coming quite a long way. I'd do some flowers for their room and I'm actually quite impressed. Nice and wild and wonderful. Love it. Well, my salad vinaigrette with honey from the bees is prepped. Do you want these? I'm just, yes please, I'm just doing a little bit of snacky bits and Mr. Millen Gordon is heating up the tomato sauce. And the weather is still absolutely glorious and the table is set. I've used my The Set table runner. Well, it's actually not. This is two, um, two tablecloths that I've kind of made into one. Um, I just think that this gingham looks so good with everything. Although Mr. Millen Gordon has put the cushions out and not changed them. Well, I made the horror discovery then that Ali hadn't changed the cushions and it made me very upset. <laughs> so I quickly changed them over. I've literally been waiting for these for weeks and I'll be damned if they're not going on when we first do our sort of summer little shindig. Uh, it's so annoying though. I'm so gutted that we're doing this and our outdoor kitchen isn't done. I know I've probably gone on about it loads and Ali doesn't like taking the covers off. So this is where we're at at the moment. They are a monstrosity, but the pizza oven is on. Everything has been cleaned and swept. The big green egg is in the middle of the floor, but this is heating up and smells incredible. I'm so excited for Mr. Millen Gordon's pizza because he makes the best dough. And what a glorious evening. Well, where are you going? Hmm? Where are you going? Where are you going? Good morning, everyone. Are we zoomed in? I feel like we're zoomed in. We are. See, I can always tell. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I am up and today I'm heading to London, but I think um, that will probably be in a next video. But don't listen to me when I say that because I don't know what bloody day it is, okay? I am so sorry. <laughs> so just for a bit of context, with me going away, it meant I had to upload a video out of succession. And I, I thought I made that clear. And sometimes I think I'm the world's worst at explaining things and I should probably just pack up YouTube, to, YouTube today. But I had to upload a video out of like alignment. So not in the numerical order that it should have been in. So it wasn't in like how life events came. See, I'm terrible at explaining things. But anyway, and I obviously got myself super confused about what I'd said in what video. And then by the time my last video went out on Monday, I realized that I'm like, oh, the elephant in the room. And I've not even talked about it. Like, I don't know if I've like picked up a camera somewhere and vlogged on a different camera, but I'm almost certain that I talked to you about my hair, but I'm thinking maybe I didn't. So this is the weirdest thing ever. And I'm so sorry because this is not something that I'm trying to hide. <laughs> I honestly like, sometimes I think I should just give it up. But basically, let me explain to you what happened. So I obviously went, you would have seen, I went to have my hair cut with Michael Van Clark and I had the diamond, the diamond cut, which was something that I'd really, really wanted to try. And what I loved about what he did was he basically, he looks at your face shape and the sort of style that you go for. And he advises a cut that, that's like good for your face shape, essentially. The process was incredible. I don't think I've, I've sort of ever seen anything like that before in my life. And I loved my cut, but what I said to him when I sat in the chair was, I'm really focusing on hair health at the moment. So I want to grow my hair back. I want my hair longer, but at the moment my hair is really damaged and I feel like that's hindering the process of growing it back. So what we did was we went shorter um, than I would ever normally be because my hair was so damaged, but it was cut in a way that was really complimentary to my face and, um, 
also was going to improve the sort of look and feel of my hair. And he was completely on board. He even said to me, I would have gone even shorter, but I know that you want like your, your hair to grow and you want longer hair. So let's treat this as a process. And I was like, absolutely. And I mean it when I say, like obviously I was invited as um, like as a press appointment, that kind of thing. But this is something that I will be paying for happily moving forward. Um, and I, I genuinely don't mind. I will be continuing to go back to um, Michael Van Clark's have my hair cut without fail, whether they will have me or not. But the thing was, is that we did that right before summer and I love my hair short and I love my hair long, but in summertime, I always gravitate to a little bit more length. And I was really lucky to then be given the opportunity by Immy. And if you don't know Immy, Immy worked with Des Pina. He was actually part of like my bridal glam squad and he did um, the bridesmaid's hair at my wedding. And he also looked after my hair when um, Des Pina wasn't able to get to the UK. And I was given the opportunity to have extensions popped in my hair. And at that moment as well, I was due to go on holiday and he also did my color for me as well. Now I was really sort of on the fence about doing this. Um, he's, he like floated the idea to me and I was like, I'm really not sure because and this is definitely something that I've had to get over. And you'll probably know this on my channel. Like I've been on a bit of a sort of, a bit of a learning journey as well. I think I always placed so much importance and I probably still do. And I'm probably very much letting go of old things that I, um, that I used to do a lot. I'm sure that's part of anyone's journey. But I put a lot of emphasis on my hair as part of my identity and it's probably why I've struggled when my hair maybe hasn't looked how I envision it in the past. And, but I've never wanted, I've actually never wanted to have extensions despite the fact that I've actually had them in the past. I had them about 15 years ago. If you don't know, I've shared these kinds of pictures and videos on my YouTube channel a lot. I always think that um, places like TikTok think that I'm really ashamed of of these kinds of things, but I'm not. I love sharing the journey with you. So my hair used to look like this um, about 15 years ago. I think it was about 15 years ago. It might even be longer than that. No, actually it must be longer than that. It must be like 20 years ago. Oh my gosh, that is bizarre. But it looked like this. I had um, a very cool and trendy like alternative boyfriend at the time and um, I got myself essentially a mullet and I had it for two months and I realized, oh my gosh, Lydia, what have you done to your hair? And I went and I had great lengths extensions added to my hair. My dad paid for them for me. And um, what they did, which is often I think a misconception with hair extensions, is they actually enabled me to grow my hair back in a much more, what's the word, like a much more sympathetic way. So I didn't have months and months or years of looking at my hair thinking, oh, I wish it would grow because I had extensions. So I couldn't really see the length of my hair too much. It was quite, um, it was quite sort of disguised. And so when I was invited to have these extensions with great lengths, it was sort of like I was kind of umming and ahhing. I also wanted to add more blonde to my hair without damaging it, which has been a really great way of doing that. Even if you don't want to add length, you can add touches of much brighter blonde to your hair to increase the color without damaging your hair. So that was another reason for me doing this. And I was sat in the chair and I was having my color done and I just thought, you know what, let's try it. Let's try it, I'm gonna have them in for about four months and I'm gonna see what my hair like looks like at the end. Obviously I take um, hair vitamins every day, I look after my hair a lot, I put a lot of emphasis and products and time into the care of my hair. And I thought that this would be interesting for me to sort of trial and showcase to you guys. So it's gonna be a long process and we're gonna see how it, well, together basically, we're gonna see what my hair looks like at probably the end of the summer. I'm not sure if I'll have them put back in. I think at most I'd have them put back in until Christmas just to ensure that I'm sort of getting my hair grown back. And then what I'm going to do straight away is book in with Michael Van Clark and go and have my hair cut, styled in the exact same style that I had cut, but just at a longer length because I want that, that face shape that, that hair health, but also I want to be ensuring that my haircut sort of suits me more as well. And so 
yeah, it's a bit of a journey that I'm on. I'm sorry that things got a little bit out of sync. I, honestly, I'm such an idiot. I don't even know how I did that. Sometimes I'm, I like impress myself, but I've got a lot in my head at the moment and I'm working on a real project that has just sort of set my soul on fire and it is also consuming a lot of my um, brain capacity, which I'm really grateful that I've had the time to be able to devote to it, despite the fact that I've been here, there and everywhere. So yes, that's basically the explanation. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood that first and foremost, I didn't get extensions because I wasn't happy with my hair. I just wanted to, I wanted to focus on growing it back in an easier way. And now that I've got my, my hair health back, for me, that's like, it made perfect sense. And the thing that really interests me is I almost feel like I'm doing less damage when I'm using heat on my hair at the moment because what essentially the um, extensions are is a lot of, the, for the most part, they're sort of wrapped around my own hair. So it's not my own hair that I'm really styling. It's, my, it's the extensions which will come out, which will be changed. And even that, I'm really fascinated to see what the hair looks like underneath. One of the other things that I think is that there's a lot of misconceptions about um, extensions doing damage to your hair. Now, I can only speak from my own experience from having them um, when I obviously was growing my hair back 20 years ago. I didn't experience hair loss or anything like that, but then I'm very, very careful with my hair. I take care of my hair. I brush my hair with the special brush that they give you twice a day, like, I'm, um, like I was told to do. And I, I pay a lot of attention to it. I make sure that there's no matting, when they tell you not to tie your hair up for the first two weeks because it will obviously pull at the hair. I don't do it and I'm really, really careful. So there's that and that's just my experience from it. It really did help me to grow my hair back in a sort of, it felt so much quicker because I wasn't staring at it every day being like, grow. So I feel like that's a bit of a misconception. Obviously you have to make sure that you're going to people that know what they're doing. I think that it's always really important to make sure that you're sort of going to someone that's trained properly. I think that's where issues can often arise in that maybe people do things, do the bonds too tight or perhaps the system that's being used isn't particularly like hair friendly, that kind of thing. That's generally where I'm like, seeing there could be scope for um, issue. But yes, so anyway, that's the big, long, um, the, the big long explanation that I should have put in my last video, but didn't. So I apologize for that. I honestly, I've, it's like realization as well, because I've been so sort of bogged down this week. Like I genuinely mean it when I say yesterday, I did not leave my laptop for over 12 hours both me and one of the girls that I work with were sat in my living room on our laptops. She stayed until, goodness, like gone nine o'clock, I think it was. And it's just been quite intense. And hopefully soon I'll be able to explain to you what it is that's kind of been going on behind the scenes. But more than anything, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I apologize for things being here, there and everywhere because it's never my intention. I want, I want you guys to be able to keep up with things and, and I'm never trying to sort of keep any secrets for, from you in that way. So yeah, I just wanted to pop a bit of an explanation at the end of my, um, of my, what video is it? What video is it? This is what I mean. My brain just doesn't work like it used to. Chelsea flower show vlog where I obviously spent um, the day with my friend Lauren and we just had the loveliest, loveliest day and just sort of explain it to you and bring you up to speed and just also explain my reasoning because I think people can sometimes often jump to, to conclusions and think, oh, you know, Lydia wasn't happy with her hair or whatever. That is honestly not the case whatsoever. I could not have loved that experience at Michael Van Clark anymore and I was so inspired and I think it's just when opportunities arise like this where I get to, to try another thing because that is my job to try all different things. I, I love the fact that I get to trial two different ends of the spectrum, like where to go and get your hair cut, but also this process of having extensions as well. So, anywho, um, I hope that that sort of makes sense in any way, shape or form and just sort of explains th things and brings you up to speed. But hopefully this will be an interesting process for you guys to see as well, see maybe how much my hair grows in that time, but also how my hair looks at the end of it, I guess. So yes, I am going to leave this rather long explanation on hair. 
it's always something that I sort of try and be, I, I try and address sort of sensitively just from past learnings. I obviously don't want to, to upset anyone. So I'm just sort of explaining it to you so that you guys understand my reasoning and, and things like that, because it's very easy especially when you're like me and you can't explain yourself very well and sometimes communication isn't your strongest point, um, that you guys always understand my intentions and what my thought process was. And my thought process really was, I get this unique opportunity to try this and share it with you and see how it goes. So why not take it? Yeah, hopefully. I'm gonna end up with my hair because I want to also show you what my hair looks like at the end, which I will do. I'll show you, once I've styled my hair, I'll show you it, even though you've seen it in past vlogs. Show you my hair at the end and also put a picture of my hair and what it used to look like um, side by side because it's actually quite incredible and impressive what Imi has achieved. He actually has made it look like my old hair. <laughs> and that is gonna be my goal in which I get back to, but with so much more health and just probably a better haircut as well, in short, but yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna finish my hair and chat to you in a minute. There we go, hair is done, and I will pop a little, a little what my hair looks like before to the side. I'm trying to be quiet because we've got um, the carpenters in and Ali is filming something. I'll tell you about it in the next video. This is the one of the um, Michael Van Clark products that survived the journey to um, Italy. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I've actually already ordered the oil, but this is a product that I didn't know I needed in my life. It's kind of like a sort of balm for your hair. Very interesting, you kind of work it in to your fingers. It's very sticky, a lot of sort of texture to it, but this works wonders on my hair for like smoothing it, especially into these extensions as well. It's like such, it's such a weird product that I never ever thought I would ever use. But it just sort of, it just smooths everything. Um, you just warm it up in your hands like that, super easy. And then I just sort of do this with it and it works really well with the extensions as well. So also smells lovely. And I've also, just for reference, used my Hairburst shampoo and I've also used the Michael Van Clark conditioner, which I love in love. But like I said, I would be using the oil, but I don't have it, it's on order. And yeah, so anyway, I'll link everything in the description box down below. Sorry if this video was a bit weird and sorry for the huge explanation. I just, I think as long as I always put out my intentions and my, my thoughts in the best way that I possibly can, if it gets lost in translation, then there's nothing nothing more I can do. But um, I just wanted to give you a bit of a backstory because I understand that this is, getting extensions maybe isn't so necessarily like me. And um, I just wanted to give you the clarity as to why. Anyway, on to the next video. I will see you in my next one. Bye.